All right, welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method on the Road. Currently in Talladega National Forest in Alabama, it is gorgeous here. Make sure you share and subscribe, and today we're going to talk about the major scale, the most misunderstood scale in all of music history. I've had so many questions from uh, YouTube comments to personal students, and today we're going to try and clarify some of it, and that's the worst part is by you know saying some, I'm sure there are going to still be some questions out there which I will answer in future videos, but let's get down to it. We're going to talk about a couple things, what a major scale is, not really a lot of music theory, not the whole whole half stuff, not that. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how to navigate uh, to finding one with um, the caged kind of mindset. All right, so the major scale. The major scale is the most important scale in all of music. In, uh, in reality, it's what a key is. A key is a major scale. That's it. A key is not the starting point of something. A key is a major scale. Harmonicas are called keys because each one is a major scale, and that's the key you use to solo over. So a key is a major scale. If you want to see that, check out this video here. I'll be pointing a lot, okay, to, to the videos pointing coming up. All right, so the major scale is a key, and from that key you can make chords, and you can use um, the major scale of a certain key to solo and create melodies. So this is the quick little thing I want to talk about. When do you use a major scale? There are some uses for it we're not going to discuss, but the main purpose, the main way to use a major scale is if you find out what key something is in, you can use that major scale to create a melody. If I'm playing a song or if somebody has written a song and I say, hey, what key is this in? They say it's in the key of D, and they know that the key is a major scale that forms all the chords or that all the chords of the song are inside the key of D, then I can use uh, the D major scale to create melodies, all right? So if you're looking, if you want to practice this stuff, you need to type in, you know, C major backing track, hope to God that it's a real C major backing track and that they're using the correct chords, and then, if, then you can use a C major scale to make a melody off of it. Now that's a brief, brief way of using it. One way that you're not supposed to use it, which a lot of people get stumped on, is anytime they play a major chord, they think they can play a major scale and have it sound good. And that's just not the truth. The way that chords line up in music or inside of a key, um, each one has kind of like a certain scale that might go with it. And if you put a major scale on top of it, on each one, it's going to sound terrible. So that's why you want to know what a key is. Like, hey, we're playing something in the key of A. Okay, the key of A means the a major scale will work on top of it. So that's what I'm going to talk about, just about how to use one briefly. Let's talk about navigating, all right? Finding these things is easy as pie if you know some caged chords and maybe some caged pentatonics. If you don't know about caged chords, check out my, um, my caged primer playlist. The first video is all you need, all right? So Let's talk about this. There are five caged shapes of chords, all right? And they are the C shape, the A shape, the G shape, the E shape, and the D shape. Each caged major chord is just the first, the third, and the fifth note of a major scale played at one time. When I'm playing this chord here, this is just the intervals, ones, threes, and fives, over and over again. And uh, to show you, it's a one, five, one, three, five, one. But you want to, you know, realize, well, where are these coming from? Well, it's coming from a major scale shape that gave birth to this chord shape. Major chords are the first, the third, and fifth of major scales. So if I have this chord shape, and we'll come back to this chord shape here, this is an E-shaped chord in the cage chord system. Well, the E-shaped major scale is right here. So when would I use this? If somebody said, hey, the song is in the key of A. Okay, cool. Regardless of where it starts, it, you know, if it can start on the D chord in the key of A. It doesn't matter. That's what modes are called. Watch my modes videos. Okay, but if something's in the key of A and they know it's in the key of A, you find an A major chord, then you play the A major. Sorry, then you play the scale shape associated with it, and you get an A major scale. And the root notes of the chords are the actual root notes of the scale. That's very cool. The root note of the chord the root note of the scale. Okay, now, let's start at the very, very beginning. Let's start with our C shape. This is a C shape chord. It is movable, right? Right here, this is an E flat. Nobody plays that. This is an F, right? This is a G chord. 
This is an A chord. If I need a major scale, let's just say it's a G major scale, I can find my C-shaped G chord, and I can play the major scale pattern that gave birth to this chord shape, and that looks like this. Some people are going to be like, well, that's the Phrygian scale shape, and it's like, no, no, and, you know, <laughs> I don't want to go too far with this. It is not. It's a major scale shape. This is the root note here. The root note of the chord is the root note of the scale, and there are ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, six, and sevens, which is what a major scale is, all over the place the root note of the chord is the root note of scale. So this was a G major scale. If I need an E major scale, well, I'll find an E, sorry, a C-shaped E chord right here. And this is my C-shaped scale that goes with the shape. It is automatically an E chord because the root note of the chord is the root note of the scale. All right, very, very true. So the C-shaped chord, you find whatever chord you need, play the major scale shape, you have that major scale. So if somebody says we're playing something in the key of F, okay, find a C-shaped F chord, it's right here. Here's my root note, F and F. The major scale shape from thick to thin. And the major root notes are where the root notes are of the chord. Oh, really? <laughs> there it is. All right, that's the C-shape. The A shape. The A shape chord, simple chord, we all play them, kind of like this. All right, this is a one, three, and five that's highlighted all at the same time. This is actually one, five, one, three, five, if you choose to play that, some people don't. But those are the intervals, and so from what shape? Well, from this shape. And the root note of the chord is the root note of the scale. That was a C chord, so that was a C major scale. Here's a G chord, A shaped. Here is the A shaped major scale from thick to thin. That's the major root note, because that's the root note of the chord. There's another root note. Very, very simple. We're talking about navigating. So if somebody said, hey, I need, uh, uh, this song's in the key of E, grab an E chord and you can solo or create melodies, really, with this scale shape. Now, if you want to create melodies, if you want to practice this, if you want to truly understand it even more, check me out on Patreon, where I'm making practice sessions to help really solidify this underneath your fingertips, all right? All right, so that was your A shape. G shape is next. The G shape chord can take a couple of different forms. It's the thin one or the thick one. All right, root note is where your pinky is in, each, in both these shapes. This is a B flat chord. This is a B flat G shaped chord. And the G shaped scale Now there are some people going that's the Aeolian shape. It's only an Aeolian shape if you think of this as the root note, but really Aeolian is a mode of major and this is the major root note. Okay? Trust me in this stuff. That's a B-flat major scale. The root note of the chord is the root note of the uh, the scale. All right, if I needed uh, an E, all right, here is an E, uh, sorry, a G-shaped E chord. And here's the pattern. So if somebody says this song's in the key of E, you can sit solo. sound great. All right, that was the G shape. The E shape we, we talked about briefly in uh, the beginning of this video. You have the E shape chord, all right, and this is the E shape scale. All right, so this is a B. So that was a B major scale. If somebody says this song's in the key of B, boom, there's my B chord. Here's my scale shape that goes with the B chord. I have a B major scale.
done, I can create my melodies. If you want to create these melodies with me, check me out on Patreon. I promise it will be fun. All right, that's the E shape. I did it briefly because I kind of already showed you. I'll do it one more time. Who am I kidding? All right, let's say somebody needs uh, an F sharp major scale. Boom. There's my E shaped F sharp chord. Same scale shape. Done. That was an F major scale. Let's get to the final one, the one I hate the most, which is the D shaped scale. Now, remember, you have a D shaped chord, here's a C chord. It's D shaped. All I need is the scale shape that goes with this, and I have a C major scale. And that scale shape from thickest to thin looks like this. So here's my C, and here's my C. So if somebody says we need um, an F chord, well, here, here's the uh, F chord, and this is the root note. You can play off the root note. You can also play thick to thin just to get it down. But this is how you find the major scale. Again, this is about navigating, okay? That was the D shape. We did the C, the A, the G, the E, and the D very quickly. But when to use them is a different monster. You can't play a major scale for every major chord. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. If you want to see it in action, check out my Althea video. Even if you're not a fan of the Grateful Dead, this is it uses an A major scale, but it's starting on a different chord. Hopefully, it'll help kind of set the idea of how modes work. So, if you want to practice playing over different chord progressions, if you want to practice nailing these shapes down, if you want to get this into your heart and soul and into your fingertips, again, check me out on Patreon. Thank you so much for being here with me on another episode of Stitch Method on the Road, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.